what are three simple and very inexpensive ways to start 3D printing in your practice from scratch? Hey, I'm Dr. Chris Griffin, founder of the 3D Printing Association for Dentists. And today we're gonna to talk about the three ways that are the simplest and least expensive ways to start 3D printing in your practice from scratch. And I'm saying from scratch because I'm assuming you're not into 3D printing at all, you don't have a 3D printer, and what's a way you can dip your toe in and find out if it's right for you, okay? And I totally get that because that's the way that I am. Hey, before we get started in this video, uh, this is the video series that we're doing to try to promote 3D printing across dentistry. I truly believe in it. I believe it's the wave of the future. It's the way for us to cut costs and really you know, lower overhead once and for all in our practice and it opens up so many opportunities. And that's why I want these videos to be successful. If you, if you don't care, take a minute, uh, subscribe to this channel, uh, give us a thumbs up if you want to, you know, it, it, it would be great to help other dentists find this because we, we really want to help other dentists fight the forces that are challenging our profession today. Okay, so what are the three ways that you can simply and very inexpensively start 3D printing in your practice from scratch if you have never 3D printed at all? Okay, well, real quick, let's assume you don't have a 3D printer, okay? Uh, so you don't have any software, you don't have a 3D printer. You can do that. You can get free software to do these procedures I'm going to talk about today. Um, don't cost you a dime. Also, printers, you know, yeah, you can see behind me. Uh, I've got a lot of expensive printers because I've been in this since, you know, 2013 and uh, really into it since 2020. But you can go on Amazon and you can get a little fella like this right here. It looks like almost like a toy that your kid might have as a 3D printer or something. Uh, this particular model is a, is a frozen Sonic Mini. There's also a slightly larger model that's, that's uh, a Sonic uh, 4K, I believe, from the company Frozen, P-H-R-O-Z-E-N. And uh, these things are sub, you know, I think this is sub $500. Um, the, uh, the larger size is sub $1,000, maybe closer to 500 uh, as of the timing of this video. So yeah, you can get this printer. Now, for free, you can, you can get software. The software we're gonna, you know, you talk about today, there's a couple of softwares totally free. One is called uh, Mesh Mixer from Autodesk. That is gonna be able to do all the stuff we're gonna talk about today. Uh, the second one is Medit. Now, Medit sells intraoral scanners. You may already know this. Pretty good scanners. The i700 is a very good scanner. Um, and what I didn't know this until I bought my Medit i700, but they have a whole suite of software that's totally free, and you don't even have to have a Medit scanner to use it. You can have any scanner you want. As long as the scanner can export a .stl file, you can use that software, right? So, uh, so Medit and Autodesk Mesh Mixer, and you're good to go for the software you need. Now, what are the procedures? Well, the simplest thing to do, you know, is to get your stuff, and now you're sub $1,000, uh, maybe closer to $500. You will have to, you know, you will have to figure out, you have to buy a little bit of resin. So, you know, we're not going to the resins today, but these, you know, you can print a lot of resins from this. For what we're gonna talk about today, this is gonna replace stuff in your practice. You don't even have to, it doesn't have to be the fancy resin that's very expensive that has all the FDA approvals because it's not going in the patient's mouth permanently. We're just trying to help get this into your practice. And the easiest way to do it is models, okay? And uh, I was talking to a dentist last night and he was shocked. You know, he's like, I hear this a lot. I don't have room to start 3D printing in my practice. You know, it's silly to me, but they say they don't have room. Well, I said, do you have a stone grinder? And he said, yeah. I said, well, once you get this, you don't need a stone grinder. Do you have a, an area where they vibrate stone into alginates and models? He said, yeah, well, you don't need that anymore. Do you have alginate? Do you have stone stored somewhere? Yeah, well, you don't need that. So you take all that stuff, it basically is the same footprint as a very simple 3D printer, a way to wash it in alcohol, a way to cure it, and, uh, and now, now you're ready to go. So, um, so let's say you get your you get your inexpensive printer from Amazon or wherever. Uh, now let's talk about what kind of models you can make. So what are you already doing in your practice? So I'm assuming number one, you probably pour up models um, to do suck downs, maybe whitening trays. Okay, so that's one. So you can print you can print these models. 
You can use the free software to create a model. You export your STL scan from your scanner, and I'm assuming you have a scanner. If you don't have a scanner, you do have to get a scanner also. Maybe you want to get a Medit, like I have got a Medit and several others. So you export your STL file. You can create this solid model from your file just exactly the same way as if you poured it up in stone, except this is made out of very good resin. You know, it's not going to chip. It's not going to flake. It's not going to bubble. <laughs> it's just almost like magic how great it is and it didn't call you know it cost you know probably about the same uh, of course you have a little front end cost but after ever you get that it's probably about the same as everything else but it's just getting your staff to change over to do a little computer design and let this thing do the work instead of them taking a great alginant or taking a great polyvinyl or who knows polyether and uh, pouring it up in stone and not getting bubbles popping it off trimming it out getting slush and and splatters everywhere. That's all gone forever, right? So you can make a model for a whitening tray very simply. Okay, second thing you can do, pour up the same kind of model. Um, and after you do, let's say whitening tray, oh, how, about a, how about a very conservative night guard? Now, all these fancy 3D printers, and, and even the smaller one, if you know what you're doing, can create uh, a nice night guard out of a nice FDA approved material. But let's not get too fancy right now. We're just trying to ease this into your practice if you've never started. So let's say currently you just use a splint material, you heat it up, standard suck down, trim it up. You don't have to change a thing in the world. You just use the same model and you do a suck down just like you always have. It doesn't change all that much. This is the simple way to ease this into your practice so you don't freak your assistants out, you know, once and for all. Uh, and they're gonna love this once they get started. You just have no idea how much easier this is. You know, we have lots of tricks and stuff on how to polish this stuff and everything once you got it sucked down, but, but simple. This, what you're already doing, all you're doing is replacing the stone model for a 3D printed model, okay? And before we get to the third way, uh, real quick, you know, we we're really, really want you guys to succeed. So this is the first step, right? If you're interested in further steps and you'd like to have, say, just step-by-step -step checklists for the three top procedures we do in our practice that are really profitable, say uh, uh, clear liners, surgical guides, and, and indentures. We've got those step-by-step -step checklists uh, for free for you, and also walkthrough videos walking you through each of those procedure checklists uh, on our website for the association, 3dpa.org. If you go there, you can grab your free checklist, free videos, and you can stay in touch with us so we can keep updating you on how you can actually get this in your practice. So what's the third way? And I didn't say this before, but any, you know, once you get good at this, first we usually start making these models solid because it's just simpler and easier and harder to mess up. After you get good at it, you can make these things hollow, right? And this same Medit software can make these super thin so you don't, it's very inexpensive the thinner they are. Um, and it also, the cool thing Medit can do, it can use, it can create study models. So that's the third thing. So, you know, you're doing, say a big cosmetic case and you wanna do study models and you wanna do a wax up or whatever, it doesn't change anything in the world except now instead of working on stone, you're working on 3D printed models. They're always more accurate, they're always more beautiful. And you can use like, you, there are white resins if you really like white, you know, I was, this is not white, but I like to do my ortho uh, models in white sometimes just so I can look at it like we did in dental school. Uh, but yeah, this is really cool. They even put these little uh, things on the back like you can, uh, you know, your lab people do a lot of times for you. So I, I love everything about this. We didn't do a lot of study models before we started 3D printing, but it's so darn easy to do with the free Medit software. Now we do it in pretty much every big case before we start. Um, and it's just really awesome. You know what? You don't have to save them. You have to store them anywhere. Just chunk them and print another one. The file, does, it doesn't cost any money to store the file on your computer. You just print another one for another you know, I don't know what this costs, five bucks, six bucks, something like that. So, so don't let the price or the complexity keep you guys from getting into this. Cause like I said, you can do that. You can change out your stone lab for less than a thousand dollars. There's also cool websites on Facebook that talk about 3d printing for dentists. Um, and you know, they just get on one of those Facebook groups and learn about they have Facebook groups specifically for these printers, like the one I just talked about. Find out a lot about that, and uh, and you guys, you know, you guys can do this. It's absolutely easy enough, very simple, and some of your staff probably will get good at it, and they will want to do it too. 
Uh, and then that's the real beauty of this when you can turn it over to your team member. So hey, go to the website, 3dpa.org, grab those checklists, and uh, get into 3D printing, guys. You will not regret it. We'll see you next time.